Okay, guys, so because I'm going to start the main thing for today, I want you to listen. So much and I did this earlier, so you need to take notes. We have questions like this in your book. Uh, one thing I complained about at first in his approach was that he wrote this. Of course, he got it right by breaking the inequality into two parts. But why do you think I don't want this? This is the first thing I saw in this paper. Anyone? Uh, not really. It's confusing. Are you saying this as is leading to this? So what it meant to do, I think the original question is this. So this is the original question. 9 less than 4x plus 1 less than 13. This is the original question. Okay, so I expect him to put the separate, separate inequality side by side, not on each other. Because what are, are you saying you're going to work out the first one in a straight line? No. It's about the presentation. Of course, it's right to have separated them in this way, but it's about the presentation. So please don't forget that. And also, somebody mentioned this. Uh, remember this question, 3 times 10 to the power minus 3, all cube? I know some of you use calculator. Why is it so hard? Did you turn it off? Dude! <laughs> Are you sure you're Portuguese? Are you my fellow African brother who doesn't like cold? <laughs> alright, alright. If you feel cold, tell me that we can you know, turn it off again. Thank you, Joe, for giving him a jacket. Alright. <laughs> I have the winter clothes, not too far away, so if you want that, you can just get it. Now, this is the question. I expect you to recall indices. Remember the law of indices? If you have a, b to power n, what do you get? a power n. a power n. b power n. Exactly. And you know a, b means a times b. That's what is happening here. So if this times this raised to the power this, it's going to be 3 raised to the power 3, then this also raised to the power 3. So basically it's 3 to the power 3, 10 minus 3 also to the power 3. And we also did law of indices, a to the power maybe n to the power m. Do you remember this law? What will it give you? n times n, like that. And that is what is responsible for this. So you are welcome to write from here directly. And then this is 27, this is that. 27, because the question is in standard form. It is expected that your answer is in standard form. Understand? So, to put in standard form, remember the first part of standard form must be between 1 but less than 10. Right? So you cannot have 27. Rather, you have 2.7. So you are going to we rewrite this as this. Do you agree? So it's 2.1. 2.7 times 10 to the power 1, right? And then we combine this with using the law of indices. Remember, 1 minus 9, right? Hello? And that is minus 8. So some of you use calculator, of course. Show some steps, maybe one or two lines is fine. Especially if the question is just one mark, maybe you don't need to bother showing steps. Okay? But if it's like two lines, three lines, or maybe a non calculator paper in the future, this is how it is expected to be worked out. Okay, this is Justin. Can you see this part? Yeah. Then also, Oscar and I were looking at this problem. Remember the problem where I gave you PQ is the line, then M is the midpoint, but this time around you were given the midpoint and one of the points, P. Then the other one is unknown. This is how we did it in the class that day. Okay? Don't use mental math. Oh, we are going to multiply by two and subtract four. No, and just write the result. No. Present your work in a, in, a, in a normal way. When I say normal, like above middle school kind of presentation. So I would expect you to, of course, start by stating the formula. Substitute what you have. The midpoint, we have it. I call this x1, y1. So what we are looking for is x2, y2. Understand? So when you substitute, for these two points to be the same, it means their x coordinate must be the same and their y coordinate must be the same. Do you agree? If their x coordinate is the same, you have a simple linear equation. If their y coordinate is also the same, you have a simple linear equation and you get this. Okay? This is the normal way I would expect it to be done. 
Again, if you are writing IGCSE and it's just one mark, you can think about your mental math and write down the answer. It means nobody cares what you did. But if you are going into IB program later, we want to see how you can present your solution. That's why I wanted to get you used to the normal way of doing stuff. All right? Uh, then, remember the indices question that looks like this. This is not in your paper. I just gave a sample idea. Even this is not in your paper. I think I just gave a sample idea. Okay? Matthew solved similar problem using logarithm. Now, the problem I have with that is that logarithm is not in your syllabus. Logarithm is in your IB syllabus, not IDCSE. So let's bring it down to the level that we are right now. Remember, I taught you logarithm during uh, compound interest, out of our exponential growth and decay, right? So that's the uh, approach that he used. But you don't have to, because these are simple indices problem, maybe two marks. You don't have to use logarithm that, you know, maybe it's for a five points question. Okay? Rather, make sure you have the same base. These are all powers of two. In your book, I think you have a question that has powers of three as well. So you have two squared. This is already in two. This is two to the power four. These two can be combined. You can write this as also power of two with negative this time. Now, with this, you can equate the powers if the bases are the same. Remember how we solved the equation then. Okay? And when you equate the powers, you have a simple linear equation and you get the value of x. So don't use logarithm. Understand? Just make sure you combine the first side so that you have only one power of 2. And also here, only one 2. So if this comes in about two or three forms, make sure you simplify them using law of indices and match them as one first. Understand? No need to cross multiply or anything. That's a waste of time. OK? Uh, I think uh, Manuela and uh, Corinne were asking about the wording here. They came up with the wording quite nice. I just asked them to include this in the wording. So uh, Oscar and I were also talking about this. So I just advise, of course, you don't have to do it that way. You can call the first one L1 and call the second one L2. So just like we did the column one over here, under this, find your gradient. Under this, find your gradient. Learn to manage space and learn to have a very neat presentation. So once you get your M1 and M2, so if they are not equal, it means they are not parallel. Is that not? And you say, oh, since M1 is not equal to M2, therefore the lines are not parallel. You can write it on the same line or come to the different line. It doesn't matter. And for the perpendicularity, the condition is that the product must be negative 1. If the product is negative 1 after you get your M1 and M2, then say, oh, since M1 times M2 is equal to negative 1, therefore the lines are perpendicular, or since M1 times M2 is not equal, or not equal, you just cross it. Negative 1, therefore they are not perpendicular, something like that. Okay? So if you have more questions, please feel free to ask. The last thing I want to mention was another confused, uh, confusion. Please note, there's the difference between this and this. In this case, the negative 1 is on x. So only x goes to the bottom. Okay? But in the second case, the entire bracket is negative 1. So both uh, the whole thing is flipped. So that's the difference between these two. So this is not equal to this. Understand? So just wanted to point that out as well. Somebody asked that question as we were working. Any questions? So that's just what I wanted to point out. So as we continue to practice, uh, we will see more, we will have more observation. Please feel free to discuss them and so that we can share with the whole class. So I'm going to begin the main stuff for today. So you can put it here. Thank you. Today is uh, eight. <laughs>
So for the rest of the class, which is saying about 42 minutes, so we kind of spend one period on that. So let's uh, leave that for now. Again, tomorrow, half of the class will be spent on these revision worksheets. And please, I expect you to do some of them on your own outside the classroom. Okay? As a matter of fact, may I ask you to suspend any form of worksheet that I'm giving you right now? and focus on this practice question, okay? So whatever you have given me so far, I can always come up with a grade for you. I don't have to wait for your old worksheets. I know where everybody's level is. I interact with you every day. You ask me a question, I come to your table. I can always say, oh, on geometry, oh, Jody is on four out of five. And don't see your result as a report of failure. See it as a feedback. Oh, Mr. Daniel thinks I'm on four. The question should be, what can I do to get on five? All right? So don't look at it like, oh my god, I'm going to die. This is horrible. Come on. Don't be unnecessary pressure. Just see those feedback from all your subjects as a kind of a, a message that, OK, you have some work to do. And focus on that work. And even if you're on the five, your work is to maintain to be on that level. Understand? So regardless of what your result might look like. But again, this is the ultimate goal, our IDCC. All right? Now, uh, I thought maybe we could do this as the last topic because of the time factor. So I will, of course, give a report to Mr. Long about the ones we have covered and the ones we have not covered. So you might come in September, and it's going to be very rushed for you to be able to cover the rest. So please, I need you to also work at that speed. And this is how you can also help yourself. Your, play, your class has a playlist on YouTube, right? Yeah. There are other playlists of the previous year. I will share with you the areas we have not done, if you need me to. You can also take a picture of those areas we have not covered. The ones I have not put any dots is the ones we have not covered. So basically, at the end of today, or tomorrow, or this week, we will have done the whole of geometry. Again, I'm speaking some area, angle at the point. Everybody knows angle at the point from middle school. We're not going to bother about that. So the only strange ones are the circle theorems. About four or five areas there. And I want us to do about two or three before the end of this class. And the last will be for tomorrow. Okay? So once we are done with this, you only need to focus on this, 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 and this. Some of them are not quite much. I wish I could do some, some classes with you. But then, we'll see. Now. Let's focus on this quickly. Angle at the center and angle at the circumference. Have you done circle theorem before? Let me know. Anyone? OK. Uh, of course, there's no time to do some investigation. I would have loved to give you some investigation and figure this out yourself. But let's just try to remember the theorem. At the center of a circle, we use uh, letter O, not 0, to denote the center, all right? So what this theorem is saying is that if you have an angle here at the center and another one at the circumference, one is always double of the other. The theorem says the angle that is subtended at the center of a circle is always twice the angle which is subtended at the circumference. The angle which is subtended, subtended means the angle formed at the center. Okay. The angle that you can see at the center is always double the angle which you can see on the circumference. So for example, if this is A and this is B, we are saying that A is always twice B. Always. Now you might think, oh, what if you have a shape like this? So this is my center.
the theorem still applies. This is the center. This is on the circumference. Circumference is on the blue line, the blue uh, arc. The center is the dot, point O. Are you with me? This is how I tell students. Clue. I'll, I'll give you as a clue now. How do you know these two are related? One is on the center. One is on the circumference. That's clue number one. Clue number two. Both of them have the same source or origin. Check this out. The, this angle A comes from here, right? Where does angle B come from? Same point. These two points is where you start to draw angle A, yes? Angle B also comes from the same source, yes or no? Look at this. The source of this angle here is here. The source of the angle at the circumference is also here. The last clue, I like to use this as the last clue for students. Same direction. A is facing down. Where is B facing? This angle, maybe I call it X, and call the other one Y. Maybe X here, and this is Y. Where is Y facing? On the left, right? What about X? If you can see these clues, then they are related by this theorem. And the relationship will be angle at the center, the way we say it, is equal to 2 times angle on the circumference. Here, what will be the mathematical relationship together? Wow. Speak louder, please. Wow. Y. That's the first theorem. In some IGCSC question, they will tell you, I will advise you to always state your reason anyway. They will tell you to state your reason. Oh, x is equal to blank because blank. So when you write your x is equal to, maybe this is 50, and this is x now. Then you say, oh, x is equal to 100, because angle at the center is twice angle on the circumference. That's what they want you to write. I'll write the short note here. Understand? Then I'll give one or two examples, and I have a worksheet dedicated to this alone. So you will take one or two in the class with your partner. Then we move on to the next one. I just need you to do, like, have a taster in the class. During your summer holiday, I will encourage you to actually devote time on these things. I will also share a link with you. It's a folder of all the worksheets we've been using. So if you have lost any topic worksheet, go to that folder, download it, print it out yourself, and practice. Understand? Then also go to past questions, download them, print them out, and practice. You should please do that over, over the holiday. I'm not saying spend the whole summer on math. Just dedicate some time. If you don't want to do every day, maybe twice in a week, three times in a week, it could be just one hour or two hours. Practice. That is how you can achieve a very good result. Otherwise, you come back and you probably don't remember anything anymore. And then you still have to do a few topics. Then it will become too stressful for you. Okay? Oscar and maybe Matthew, can you give this out quickly? Share them to, to give it out to people so that we can do one or two questions together. You don't have to copy anything in class because of our time. So just take that worksheet and you're going to do it like I'm doing one of them now. Or maybe two of them. Respond, please, if you do not have any. So, let's say this is angle X, and this is angle 50 degrees. In this case, you can say this is angle X, and here is angle 80 degrees. Okay, everybody look up.
So this is how you do that. You see when you write, what did you write? 102, 61, what is that? What do you think you have done wrong? Why do you do that? Okay. Please, again, the statement is angle at the center is twice angle on the circumference, right? Which angle is at the center? That's the first one we write. Is means equals to. Okay? Twice the one on the circumference. Twice means two times. What is the one on the circumference? 50. So that's the first thing you should write. Again here, angle at the center, which one is at the center? 80. Uh, that's, what, that's 80. It's twice on the circumference. Is it equal to what? Speak louder? 2x. Of course, this does not need anything other than multiplication. Why this is division, is that not? You can just write x is equal to 40 degrees. You don't have to show me divided by 2. But this is very important. The statement of the theorem is being used. Okay? So this, the reason, if you, if you were asked to write the reason, which I will encourage you to, once you write this line, you open a bracket, you say, angle, this is allowed. Okay? Angle at center is two times or twice. Angle at circumference. You put that in the bracket. And that is your reason. If there's an IGCSE question, you are not required to put it in the bracket. In fact, they create the space for it to write the reason. And that's the only reason you need to write. Okay? So you do the same for them. I want you to look at question one. Look at the first two. The first four on the page. Okay? So the first two on this column, the first two on the other column. Can you quickly do that? This reason is after each question. Okay? I'm not saying write it at the top. So just like this one again. Angle at center is twice angle at circumference. You put it in front of the line. The more you write it, you for the uh, for the sake of our time, you may only write it maybe for one of them now. But when you are practicing, make sure you write it in every step. In every question, I think. Check with your partner to be sure you are doing the right thing. And don't waste too much time. So in about five minutes, I'll stop you. Different, yeah. Hmm. I'll take. Uh, I think I'll take one example. So this one, you have to get this first before you can get the X.
Okay, let's do this together. Everyone look. I think I, this is better to be done first. Which of the angles W, X, Y, Z is easier to get? W. W. Ah. Angle. Angle on a straight line. So, W plus 100 equals 180 degree. That's the relation. You must always write the relation first. Understand? So W equals to 180 minus 100. So W is equal to 80 degrees. Yes? What is the next one to get easily? X. Now, this is a problem. When I say angle at the center, twice angle on the circumference. Let's call these points A, B, C, and D. Okay? Now, what, is, what are the origin of angle X? A Which A point? A Say that again. A and, A and C. What about angle Y? A and C. Again? A and, C. A and C also. Understand? What about angle Z? A and C. A and C. What about angle W? A and C. They all have origin A and C. And I told you they should have the same origin, right? So it can be confusing to know which one is twice which one. That's why I gave you the other clue. Any two that you want to relate using this approach, one must be at the center, one must be on the circumference, right? We have two at the center, two on the circumference. So which one is related to which one? Is W related to X or Y? Is Z related to X or Y? Who wants to go first? Let's go on. Why? They're facing the same direction. Facing the same direction. That's where the direction clause comes in. Tiago? Confusing? Who's confused? Raise your hand. You want me to repeat? Who understand what we just did? Raise your hand. Very good. So W is facing up. X is facing up. So W and X are, are connected. All right? Angle at the center, that's W. So that's the one you write for. It doesn't have to be the unknown. Like this, we wrote the unknown first, but here we wrote the known first. Then we flip it later. Please, do not write 40 is equal to x for me. I don't want to see that stuff again. You flip it back. Understand? So here, angle at the center, x to w. Yes? Hello? Then your x will be equal to, oh, 2 times 80, and that is 160 degree. X is dotted now. Which other angle is easy to get? Why? Why is that? Angle at the point. What is the sum of angle at the point? 360. That's it. So what will be the relation? How do I write? What's the first thing you write for me? X, X plus Y. y. Very good. So don't just say, oh, y is equal to 360 minus 160. Y is equal to 200. Come on. That's not a good mathematical communication. You can get away with it in form 3, but you may not get away with it in form 5 and 6. Understand? Then after writing this, what do we do next? Substitute. Substitute. So tell me. 160 Yes? Then y is equal to 360 minus 160, and then y is equal to